God is faithful. God's word is our strength. God forgives. God is help. Jesus is king. God restores relationship. God is love. Jesus is compassionate. God is near. Jesus restores. Jesus is life. God's Spirit changes everything. This changes everything. Hey BNC kids, we are so excited to see your faces this morning and I really look forward to what our lesson is going to be. You know, in fact, I have a question for all of you guys. Are you ready? If you could meet any famous person in the world, who would it be? So let's think about that for a second. Hmm. Turn to your neighbor. Maybe it's your mom. Maybe it's your dad. Maybe it's one of your siblings or grandma and grandpa, but whoever it is, turn to them right now and tell them who you would want to meet. Okay, I'm going to have everyone tell their answer on the count of three. Ready? One, two, three. Wow, those are awesome answers. You guys, I have a lot of people I would probably want to meet too. Well, this morning, we're going to talk about somebody who back in his day was actually kind of a big deal. He was a Pharisee and his name was Nicodemus. And Nicodemus has a really cool um, interaction with Jesus in John chapter 3. So before we get into our lesson and before we do anything else, I would love it if all of you stood up and got ready, made space in the living room or the dining room or wherever you are to lift your hands and to dance and worship. All right, let's do it together. I'm reading my B.I.B. early and this is what it says to me. It tells me that I'm never ever alone. I'm learning how Came down to us and gave his best Without a doubt the best friend you'll ever know Our God knows exactly what I need So I remember this Let's go! When you ask, he cares When you see, he's there When you knock, 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 knock God opens up the door When you ask, he cares when you see, he's there When you knock, 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 knock God opens up the door oh, I'm reading my B.I.B. early And this is what it says to me It tells me that I'm never, ever alone I'm learning how J.S.U.S. Came down to us and gave his best Out of doubt, the best friend you'll ever know Our God knows exactly what I need So I remember this Let's go! When you ask, he cares When you see, he's there When you knock, 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 knock God opens up the door When you ask, he cares When you see, God opens up the door When you knock, 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 knock God opens up the door When you ask, He cares When you seek, He's there When you knock, 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 knock God opens up the door God opens up the door oh, oh, oh. 
stay in history A death has beaten you and rescued me Sing it out, Jesus is alive The empty cross, the empty grave The life eternal, you have won that day Shout it out, Jesus is alive Times it's you I 
It's game time, and today's game is called Guess This Slow-Mo. For this game, we're going to show you a video clip of someone smashing something with a sledgehammer. But we're going to play that clip backwards, and your job is to figure out what the item is. So, make sure as soon as you know what the item is, you pause the video and make a note of the number. That will be your score. You'll add those scores up throughout the rounds and then find a total at the end and leave that total in the comments. Are you ready? Let's go! It's a piggy bank. Did you get it? Great job. Hey, let's do another one. It was a watermelon. Did you get it? Great job. Let's do another one. Are you ready? Let's go. It was a plant in a vase. Did you manage to get that one? Great job. Add up all of your points and leave a comment to let us know how well you did. Oh my goodness, I do not like the dark. The dark is a little scary, but that's okay because if you want to hide something, you don't put something you're trying to hide under a lamp, do you? Nope. You put it in the dark. And, well, sometimes we try to hide sin in the dark too, but the fact of the matter is, is God sees everything. He sees all of our heart. He sees all the things we do. He even sees all the things we think. Man, if he sees everything, he must not love me too much. But actually, today we're talking about how God is love. And even though all those things are true and He sees all the things about our lives, God is love and He loves us unconditionally. In fact, He loves us so much that He sent His Son to die for us. Even though He could see all of those things, He sent His Son to die for me and to die for you so that He could be with us. Wow, that is love. God is love. Hey kids, today we've got a new remember verse, and we're going to learn that remember verse by using a puzzle. In fact, it's kind of a tricky one, so I want to give you a couple of moments to see if you think you can figure out what this verse is. If you can't, maybe you can look it up in your Bible. It's Psalms 145 verse 8. Pause this video and try and see if you can figure out the puzzle. Let's go through and explain the Remember Verse puzzle. In the first image, you can see the arrow is pointing to the word next to it. L and D is on the side, but in the middle you see a paddle for a boat. This paddle is also called an oar. So you have Lord. So the first two words are the Lord. The next word is an S, and that stands for is. The one following that is a difficult one. It begins with a G and ends with C-S. Well, what's that picture in the middle? 
that picture is a ray gun. So God is, or the Lord is, gracious. The Lord is gracious and this one's a tough one. Let's look at those pictures. There's a comb. There's a football player passing the ball. There's a leg pointing at the lower leg, which is the shin. So that says comb, pass, shin, eight. What word is that like? The Lord is gracious and compassionate. This next picture is of a snail. And a snail is slow. So the Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger. This one shows two money bags. The letter in and a heart to stand for love. So we've got the Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and rich in love. Let's say that with me. The Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and rich in love. Psalm 145 verse 8. Great job, kids. Let's see if we can learn that over the next few weeks. Well guys, it's time for our lesson, God is love. In today's part of the big God story, we're gonna be talking about a man named Nicodemus. Nicodemus was a really special guy who saw something also really special in Jesus. You see, Nicodemus was a Pharisee and Pharisees hadn't been really nice to Jesus. They didn't support him or follow him at this point in the big God story. And Pharisees were kind of important. They were Jewish leaders and they were really dedicated to obeying the Old Testament law. In fact, they wanted to do it perfectly. They wanted to do it really well so that they could please God and so that they could be a part of God's family. And one night Nicodemus decided he wanted to go talk to Jesus because he saw something happening in Jesus's life and ministry that made him curious. It made him want to ask questions and dig a little bit deeper. One day, Nicodemus went to see Jesus and he did it under the cover of night when it was dark and no one could see him, probably because he knew that if he was seen with Jesus, people might think something was up and that I don't know, maybe Nicodemus even liked Jesus or liked what he taught or supported him. And so Nicodemus wanted to be very careful. He was curious, but he wasn't so sure yet if he wanted to follow Jesus. He had to do some more investigating. So when Nicodemus came to Jesus, he said this thing to him. In John chapter three, verse two, you guys, if you have your Bibles, feel free to take them out and have mom and dad help you get to that verse and chapter. If you don't have your Bible with you, that's okay. I'll put it on the screen. But John chapter three, verse two says, Nicodemus approached Jesus and said this, Hey, my Pharisee friends and I know you're a teacher who came from God. And we know that because no one could do the signs and wonders that you've done unless they had God's help. God must be with you. When Nicodemus says this to Jesus, Jesus responds in kind of a funny way a way that doesn't really answer the question or at least doesn't seem to answer the question. But if we dig a little bit deeper, we'll understand better what Jesus meant when he says this. In John chapter three, Jesus responds to Nicodemus and he says this, Nicodemus, anyone who wants to see God's kingdom has to be born again. See, Jesus knew better than to think that Nicodemus would just come around because, well, he just wanted to know something. 
Nicodemus was curious because he saw something special in Jesus. And he understood that it wasn't just that he was a cool guy or that he was a good leader. He knew that God was with him. And Nicodemus, being one of the religious leaders, was kind of scratching his head like, wow, maybe I've been wrong to reject Jesus. Now, the Bible doesn't say this explicitly or exactly, but the Bible does kind of make it seem like Nicodemus really wants to know more about Jesus because he's really understanding that there's something special and that God has sent him. And if he doesn't get to know Jesus better, he's missing out on something really important. And when Jesus responds to Nicodemus, he tells him that if he wants to see the kingdom of God, he has to be born again. But this kind of confuses Nicodemus. I mean, what would Jesus mean by that? Be born a second time? In fact, Nicodemus responds to Jesus, well, I can't just go back into my mom's tummy and be born a second time. That's not how it works. But that's not what Jesus meant. Jesus wasn't talking about us literally becoming babies again. He was the question that we want to ask ourselves then is, how do we be born again? And why is it so important that Nicodemus and we followed Jesus? You know, Jesus tells Nicodemus that the Holy Spirit is like the wind and you can't see it. So you don't always know where it's coming from and you don't always know where it's going, but you can see and you can hear its effects on everything else like this. Wow! Look at this! same way that the wind is invisible but can be seen moving stuff and shaking things up the holy spirit is also moving in our lives or can move in our lives and can change us from the inside out the holy spirit changes us when he comes to live inside of us he transforms our hearts and makes us into the kind of people that god wants us to be that's what it means to be born again, to be given new life through the power of the Holy Spirit and to be changed and transformed as a person, to look more and more like Jesus. We're given a new start and a new life, almost as if we were like babies, right? When babies are born, they don't have to worry about a, a past, they're starting fresh. When babies are born, they have a whole life ahead of them. They're fresh and they're clean and they're sweet. And God turns us from people who are full of sin and regret and shame and things that are hard or maybe things that we shouldn't have done. And he takes those things away and he washes us clean and he gives us new life. And we are born again. See, that life that Jesus offered Nicodemus, like a newborn baby. He's offering that not just to him, he's offering that for us too. We can say, God, I wanna be born again. How can I be born again? If any of you kiddos this morning are thinking to yourself, I'm not sure if I'm born again. Well, let's talk through that. First of all, you're born again if you've trusted in Jesus and decided to follow him. To trust in Jesus is just to say that you recognize that Jesus died and he resurrected and that those two things are what set you free from having to be slaved to sin and to death. Two of our biggest enemies that try to bring us down all the time, that try to separate us from God and from an awesome relationship with him. If you've said, yeah, Actually, I do believe that and I have decided to follow Jesus and I've been baptized and I decided that I've been followed, following Jesus. Well, then the Bible says that what happened was that when you did that, the Holy Spirit entered your life and not just your life. The Holy Spirit lives within you. And that means that God is very, very close to you. And he's the one who's helping transform you and change you into the person that he 
longs for you to be. The person that looks like Jesus and treats people like Jesus. That's who he's changing you into. So this morning, if you think to yourself, well, actually, I don't think I've trusted in Jesus and I never really thought about what he did for me and I guess I just didn't really know about it. Well, then this is your opportunity to be born again, to accept Jesus's invitation. If you're, you've been curious, if you're like Nicodemus, not really sure about whether or not you should follow Jesus, I want to invite you to follow Jesus. Not only is it worth it, it's the best decision you could ever make. So this morning, if that's you and you say, I want to be born again, I want new life in Jesus. Let's pray together. If you would, close your eyes and bow your head and repeat after me and make this prayer your own. You're not just following Jesus because I'm telling you to, and you're not just following Jesus because you're saying the words that I'm saying. You're following Jesus because this is your decision, and you're going to have to keep making that decision every day to show God, God, I trust you. I trust you and I believe you did what you did and I accept your gift of salvation. So if that's you and you wanna be born again, pray with me now and make it your own. God, I want to be born again. I need your Holy Spirit just like Nicodemus needed your Holy Spirit to transform me and change me to make me new and to give me new life. God, I want to spend the rest of my life and all of eternity with you. Lord, I want to follow you. And I believe in my heart that you died on the cross, that you resurrected, and that because of that, I'm set free from sin and from death. I don't have to worry anymore because I'm a part of your family. Thank you, God, for sending Jesus. Amen. Awesome, you guys. Well, I just want to really quick read a scripture for you. It's John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he sent his one and only son, that whoever, that anybody who believes in him would not perish, would not be separated from God forever, but instead they would have eternal life, life forever with God, because God loves you. Don't awesome. Well, you guys, it's been a great time this morning talking about our story with Nicodemus. I hope that you guys have a great week. I can't wait to see you. I can't wait to talk with you again after all this is over. But for now, we're signing out and we'll see you later. Okay, bye.